the Rosalind hoax. Yeah. That was that wasn't that from the same publisher, though, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It yeah. just happens to be, sorry to get my conspiracy theorist head on, which yes. just happens to be Lewis Masonic. That's right, yeah. The same. Which is a free yeah. Masonic publisher. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, again, yeah. why should we believe that Roslyn hoax and that Tim Wallace are wrong? Well, at the uh, same time, there's, uh, Lewis Masonic have published, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, Roslyn Templars, uh, you know, um, that, that kind of stuff. Um, so there's, there's the two views at the moment, I think. There's this fantasy view, uh, where, where I call it, or, or the speculative view, really, is probably okay. the correct term for it, where, you know, the Templars come down, rescue Robert the Bruce and mm. Rosalind Chapel. Um, well, you're I, saying and this, then there's from the, a scholarly point of view, there is no texts. Yeah, there's, there's no, no link. No evidence, we've got there's no, no evidence. archaeological evidence, we've got no textual evidence. Nothing, no. No, no letters, no diaries, no nothing no. to link from the 14th century to the, what you're pointing out, 17th century. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's quite a gap, really. Yeah, isn't it? with the Templars, yeah, with yeah. The Templars. There's no, there's no link. The only in in the 19th century, there was there was actual um, uh, Masonic his, historians. They were actually publishing stuff saying, "Oh, this Templars stuff that's been being discussed that we're linked to the Templars is rubbish," you know. And they were even saying it then, you know. Yeah. Um, but they were also saying, of course, te Freemasons mm. were also saying that there was. Yeah, that's right. So, so even within Freemasonry, there's this. That, argument. That's right. That's and, right. And, yeah. and a lot of them use the, the argument that there is a Templar degree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about that? Well, that, that only comes from uh, the 18th century. That that developed from then. All all the rituals, um, the, these these extended rituals uh, like the um, Knights Templar and the uh, the Mark Mason degree and mm. all of these kind of stuff. Um, that's 18th century. And um, I even suggest in the book as well how, how th those came about, and especially with the third degree, where there's some evidence to suggest that it was uh, written by a guy called uh, Dr. Jean uh, Theophilus Desagoulier. Yeah. Trying to say in that one, you've had a, a few pints. That's, no. uh, oh, it's terrible. <laughs> um, so um, um, he was um, basically the, um, I was, I was going to say the, uh, the father of modern Freemason, really, and I think he is in a way. He, he, he was um, a guy that uh, um, came along. Um, he was a, a French Huguenot uh, by um, oh descent, and, <laughs> and he came to London. And he was a natural philosopher. He was a friend of Isaac Newton. Mm. Um, he was in the Royal Society, and he helped to mould modern Freemasonry. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the Grand Lodge, the premier modern Grand Lodge started in 1717 in London, mm -hmm. um, that's when uh, he got involved. And in the 1720s, he um, created this third degree. Mm -hmm. And uh, hence, we've got the three degrees in Freemasonry now. Before that, there was only, only two, really. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, Apprentice and Fellowcraft. Um, and Desagoulier, he came along, created this third degree, mm. uh, with a lot of imagery regarding Solomon's Temple and, and um, uh, you know the cycles within Solomon's Temple and yeah. death and rebirth, um, and um, an influence on him was Sir Isaac Newton, who was into his alchemy, oh, yeah. and he was obsessed with Solomon's Temple, as was Christopher Wren as well. Mm. So um, that's so basically. So weren't the Freemasons obsessed with Solomon's Temple before these guys? Um, because this is what they tell us. Yeah, right? this is yeah. The, the tradition. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. The, I, I suppose with Solomon's Temple, it was always with it being mentioned in the Bible and being an important central symbol in the Bible, really. The you house know, of a, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An architectural um, kind of embodiment of God, if you like, yeah. uh, the divine uh, word of God within architecture. So I suppose it was always important to them in that respect. But uh, it wasn't until the 18th century that. Um, this degree ritual came about. Right. So that's interesting. Mm. But you're so, but really, I mean, in in, in essence, I mean, we've only got like half a minute left before mm. the break. But in essence, you're saying because of the lack of evidence, mm. that means it's not true. But it could yeah. be true, couldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Could I it mean, be true? There's, there is um, the thing with Freemasonry, with it being a secret society, there is a lack of evidence. Yeah. So, uh, but I when mean, just because Newton, you know, doesn't have his name on a list of roles anywhere. Yeah. Doesn't mm. mean he wasn't a Freemason. Yes. Yeah. I've done some research on various people like Jules Verne, etc. Oh yeah, yeah. And the influences that the guy had yeah. around him and the things that he wrote and did. Is amazing. Yeah. It's like it points to the fact that the bloke was a Freemason. Yeah. Or yeah. Mm. was highly influenced by them. Yeah. But you mm. know, you've got French Revolution going off and you've got all kinds of different things. So a lot of the roles were 
destroyed or hidden because of politics. That's right. That's Could right. it be that Newton had the similar... But we, what we're getting is that, that this is a book about the actual real evidence that exists, and it's not about making the leaps that we were talking about before the break, mm. where we're, we're saying that just because there aren't texts to say and the Knights Templar rested themselves in Roslyn Chapel yeah. <laughs> and built this wonderful thing there. Mm. Um, just because those texts aren't there, you're saying that that means it's not necessarily true, or do you think that it may be possible? Give um, somebody a glimmer of hope out there, because there's, well, there's a thousand books all, all based on that theory. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll probably sell anyway, you know, because, um, um, you know, the, the majority of them are good reads anyway. Um, and, but the, um, so you think that there is no link, definite? Definite no link whatsoever. So where, what is the origin of Freemasonry? If it's not in the Knights Templars who got it from Jerusalem digging below the temple and mm. before that Egypt and before yeah. that wherever. Yeah, yeah. If it's not that, is it just simply that a bunch of stonemasons wanted to set up some kind of, you know, well, union? That's it really, yeah. The, um, the Freemasons, uh, free stonemasons, mm. uh, were like a, a guild uh, What's a free stonemason as opposed to a mason? Um, a free stonemason um, is someone that works in limestone, and um, uh, which is so they do all the nice, pretty faces and yeah, colors and yeah, and and it's uh, a bit more kind of upmarket than the sandstone. Uh, I mean, most most cathedrals and and the medieval cathedrals and medieval churches are built out of sandstone because okay. uh, there's, there's a lot of it around in uh, Britain. Uh, and so but, what's a speculative mason? Well, the speculative Freemasons, they, they started uh, around about the, um, the very, very late uh, 1500s and the 1600s. Um, and you get um, um, the, a lot of the old lodges, uh, the guild lodges mm. kind of basically dying off a bit. You know, but these aren't the lodges kind of as we see them today, are they? <clears throat> they're not, no, they're, they're, they're not different. Yeah. ordinary people who can't touch, you know, do anything with stone. Mm. These were real stonemasons. These were real stonemasons. And, and they were set up at places like cathedrals and churches and... Yeah, or they'd the, the, the travel around a lot as well. They'd, they'd work on a cathedral probably for about 40, 50 years, and then that one would be finished, and then they, they might have to go off and repair another one, so there'd mm. be a bit more work 20 miles down the road or something like that. Um, by the time we get to the late 1500s, and especially the 1600s, uh, the 17th century, um, you get a lot of um, people uh, entering these lodges, um, you know, for special reasons. Mm. Um, and there's an incident of that in Warrington, uh, which is where I'm from. Um, there was a guy called Elias Ashmole, who's yeah. quite famous. The Ashmolean Museum, That's Oxford, right. Yeah. That's the one. Um, and he actually um, was fighting in the Civil War in um, the 1640s. Yes. By, by 1646, there's, um, uh, the parliamentarians are getting the upper hand and have almost won the first stage of the war. Yeah. Ashmole was fighting as a royalist and he was in Worcester, in the siege of Worcester. And um, they lost that, that battle and he kind of scarpered and he, and he headed up towards Cheshire where his um, first wife's father um, still resided in a place called Smallwood. Mm. She's still, still there to this day. Um, his first wife had died, um, <clears throat> and he kind of resided with his father-in-law, really, to, to heal himself, I suppose, because mm. he's, you know, he'd, he'd just lost his mother on the way back. The, the land was ravaged with war. Yeah. The royalist cause was, was finished in their eyes mm. at that time. Uh, and... Um, uh, that was about July, and then by the time you get to October uh, in 1646, um, he's um, entering a lodge in Warrington. Right. And, and um, he's obviously not a stonemason, so... That's right. And he's been made a mason with uh, a parliamentarian um, called Henry uh, right. Mainwaring, who's uh, a cousin of his father-in-law. Mm. Um, so it's quite strange that you've got this, um, this stern royalist and this stern parliamentarian. And is this the earliest that we've got? In England, yeah. In England? Yeah. In so England. There's, we've got earlier elsewhere? Yeah, in Scotland, um, the, um, there's a couple of old lodges, uh, one particular lodge in Edinburgh um, that um, has minutes dating from the, I think it's 1599. Um, and they, they were a stonemason's lodge, and they had started kind of accepting these right. uh, local bigwigs, if you like. Right. Um, and so you see the same thing going on, you know, they, they, these stonemason lodges are kind of accepting these people mm. that aren't masons and they're the speculative masons that are coming in.
right. as opposed to the operative masons. So, um, so